I recently did a video on how to train your own Dream Booth instance using Google Colab. And in that one, I had taken some pictures of a toy robot and I made a ZWX robot concept and showed how you could embed that robot in just about any situation or place you wanted to. And I got a comment and thanks for the question, which was, can you place more than one person or thing in the image? And the example given was, can I have some photos of me and my dog? And so given pictures of a person, pictures of a dog, can we put them together in different locations and situations and so on? And so I wanted to find out how easy this would be. And this notebook already has this laid out for us, in fact. So last time we only defined one concept, but actually we can define many concepts. So this time I've switched it around so that ZWX is going to be me. I figured if anyone's going to get weird images generated, in this, it should be me who's suffering. So I've uploaded some images of myself, only four and all pretty similar, but that's what I had. And then I found this cute character and uh, got quite a few different pictures in different poses and so on. And so the commenter was asking about the code that needed to change as well. So it's this concepts list that needs to change. And you need to add all the concepts or things that you want to embed in these images. And that's going to affect the training, as it says in this comment up here. I'll talk about that a bit later. But for now, we've got this ZWX person, that's me, UKJ dog, that is the dog. So you need to update each of these settings so that everything lines up. And in this case, the class prompt, we're generating pictures of dogs in general, and in this case, pictures of people in general. And I actually have another person in here and just using the same concept. So you run through the training from scratch, in this case, when you change the concepts, and then after that, you should be able to generate images using prompts that reference both of your concepts. So having done this earlier, this is just a grid of sample images that are generated. And this is really sim similar to the images, except, you know, some things happen like color of top changes and can't say I'm a huge fan of what it's done to my chest there. And also face is really quite different. This is probably closest to what I actually look like or those pictures actually look like anyway. And so we can get into generating some images and see if we can get me and a dog as if it is my dog. So here I went for portrait of ZWX person and UKJ dog illustration. Nice and simple. This does not look like me, but it's a start. It's kind of, it's got the dog. I mean, it knows the, uh, it's a Shiba Inu and here, oh yeah. So I'm trying this earlier and uh, it's already very special, the uh, results that you get here. So I've got two people who, I don't know, they're somewhat approximating me. And there we are, sweet picture of us holding our dog. That's a bit more like, me, it's a little bit weird. The dog, I seem to be wrapping <laughs> in a blanket that I'm wearing, I don't know. Well, this is probably, this is probably the best one I could get. That's very cute. I think this could actually pass. It looks like me, it looks like the dog, quite pleasant. Here, I've gone a bit more formal for whatever reason. We're all a bit more formal. Also doesn't look all that much like me anymore. But this is something now you can use all the kind of prompt engineering you might wish to, if you just want to put in different styling. And here's where you can go to sites like the Lexica site I showed in the other video. Whoa. So this is where negative prompts come in handy because for some reason, Stable Diffusion is very keen for me to have some kind of facial hair. Mm, I quite like that. Yep. Something's crept in there, not entirely sure. Let's try and have it. 
centered. Let's see if that'll improve matters. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's really gone off track and what I asked for realistic. That was maybe a mistake. Quite disturbing. Okay. Mm. A bit closer. But one thing is I didn't upload very many images of myself. And if you're familiar with apps that allow you to generate these kinds of photos, wow. S scroll out of there. Then they normally say you want 20 photos. You need to upload 20 photos to the app. And then they're doing their training based on that. So four is really not enough. But Hopefully this makes it clear how you can add as many concepts as you like. And what you need to do is extend this dictionary as it's called in Python, which is this list of, well, it's a list of dictionaries where you've got the keys on the left-hand side and then the uh, values for those keys. And in each case, you're specifying the same keys and you can add more, but it is going to affect the training. So the default in this notebook is 800 epochs. And so I did increase this. So if you train with multiple epoch values, then you want to be able to look at those different outputs. So I've trained multiple times and I know that I've got one which I did up to 800 steps, 1600 steps and 2400 steps. So I can actually change this to 2400. So running that and it's not going to run because I am still running this UI down here. So if I stop that then I'll be able to rerun and definitely get different results. Where was it? Okay, so that one's already run. And so I would want to rerun this inference cell, which is taking the model path from that weights directory, which I just specified. Don't know if it's gonna output it here, maybe not, but um, now gone for the run that was trained for significantly longer. So now if I maybe regenerate these, and here I borrowed some negative prompts, which I found on uh, some sites. Let's see what we get. Well, I quite like this, but it's not really what we're after. So. From here though, what you want to be experimenting with is, amongst other things, the guidance scale, which is about how much the prompt should be followed. Let's generate that. And then the number of steps, which can make a big difference. So I recommend playing with those. I have found that with the 2400 step training um, getting many more cases when I tried it earlier where I'm just getting two, two dogs. That's creepy, but I got two dogs and okay. It's somewhat clear. Get some kind of logo here. And so you can play with the guidance scale and the steps and also the length of the training. And that's going to affect how long it takes, but it should take around about 20 minutes to train. And so that's it. If uh, you have any questions about this, then please let me know.